Um, as has been mentioned, I am the author of a book that examines the IPCC, which is why I have the pleasure of addressing you today. My book is called The Delinquent Teenager Who Was Mistaken for the World's Top Climate Expert. So the IPCC is a prominent, immensely influential international body. Reports written by the IPCC are cited by governments around the world as the reason that we need new taxes, such as carbon taxes, and is the reason that we need ever stricter control on greenhouse gas emissions. This year is an important milestone because the IPCC has just turned 25 years old. Back in 2007, it was awarded the Nobel Peace Prize. Curiously, despite its importance on the international stage, the IPCC has received little media scrutiny. So I'm here to tell you what I discovered when I began taking a close look at the IPCC. The short version is that the public is being misled. On the IPC's website, there is a 300 word description. It expressly declares that, quote, the IPCC is a scientific body, unquote. As you can see from the red lettering that I've inserted, the red coloring, the words scientific and scientist get used rather often, seven times, in fact, in this brief description. We are supposed to come away from the IPCC's website convinced that what's going on there is science. But if the IPCC is a scientific body, what are we to make of remarks by its chairman, Regenda Pachori? These particular remarks weren't made hastily off the cuff. Rather, they were part of a speech he prepared in advance and then delivered to a gathering that was celebrating the IPCC's 20th anniversary. So what did he say? He said that the UNFCCC, the organization that's currently holding the climate summit here in Warsaw, is his organization's main customer. So let's remind ourselves what the UNFCCC is exactly. It's an international treaty that came into existence at the Earth Summit held in Rio in 1992. The UN Framework Convention on Climate Change is a treaty between nations. Nations are political entities. Treaties are about power and politics. The chairman of the IPCC says that his main customer is a political entity. He's pleased that an IPCC report had a major impact in shaping a political document called the Valley Roadmap. According to its chairman, what's going on at the IPCC is not science for science sake, it's science for politics sake. There are then two versions of what the IPCC is all about. Version number one, intended for the general public, says that the IPCC is about science. We are told this is a scientific body. You can trust us, we're scientists. Version number two is what the head of the IPCC says to insiders. In that context, his message is, we serve the UNFCCC. The IPCC, a UN entity, has a purpose. That purpose is to help another UN entity, a climate treaty, stay alive. Politics, not science, is in the driver's seat here. Another way to think about this is to ask the question, Who's in charge of the IPCC? Is it the scientists who write these massive reports and who get described in newspapers as IPCC lead authors? Is that who's in charge? 
Well, late last year, a whistleblower from inside the IPCC sent me, as a journalist, three internal data sticks. This was a leak of unprecedented proportions. In January, I released the entire contents of these three data sticks onto the internet. All of this material is now in the public domain. The chairman of the IPCC has made a number of unequivocal statements about how transparent his organization is. He said things like, you can't think of a more transparent process. Our work is carried out with complete transparency. We are a totally transparent organization. Whatever we do is available for scrutiny at every stage. But among the documents on these data sticks, there's one that tells certain IPCC personnel that the progress reports that they're writing are for internal use only. These, quote, will not be made public, unquote. These people are assured. Let's compare and contrast. The chairman of the IPCC says, whatever we do is available for scrutiny at every stage. But insiders are told, only comments and author responses will become part of the public record. In other words, whatever happens at the IPCC stays at the IPCC, except for certain categories of documents. The chairman insists that the IPCC is open to scrutiny at every stage, but insiders are told that the comments and author responses will be made public at the very end of the process, at e-launch. So it seems to me that in these 17 words uttered by Chairman Petrori, we have three inaccuracies. The IPCC is not a totally transparent organization, or I wouldn't have had to put all of this material on the internet. Everything it does is not subject to scrutiny. The public will be shown only a small glimpse of what is going on, not the entire picture. Nor is this an organization that is subject to scrutiny at every stage. It's only at the very end that the IPCC will share some of its data with us. So now that you have an idea of how reliable the IPCC's chairman is, we come back to the data sticks and to the question of who is in charge at the IPCC. Our scientists in charge. One of the documents on those sticks was about chapter four of the IPCC's latest report. That chapter is called Terrestrial and Inland Water Systems. Now, outsiders who provided feedback on an early draft of chapter four were concerned that its title is misleading. They felt that the word ecosystems should be substituted for the word systems. That's a pretty small change. Three characters. This is what it was suggested that it should be called. Change three, add three letters to the title, said the outside reviewers, and it won't be misleading anymore. But what we learned from another document on these data sticks, material that was never intended to be made public, is that the authors of Chapter 4 have no authority to make this change. Why? Because the title of that chapter and of every other chapter in the IPCC report was decided years ago by bureaucrats. It was then approved at a plenary meeting. Scientists don't take part in those meetings. Governments do. Any government who belongs to the United Nations can send people to the plenary meetings and vote on various motions. 
So in the words of the people who wrote this particular uh, document that was supposed to stay secret, making a change as minor as this one, adding three letters to a title, would entail traversing a thorny path that would involve a number of IPCC actors and bodies, possibly all the way up to the plenary itself. So we're told that this is a scientific body, but the scientists can't even add three letters to the title of a chapter. When we're told that the IPCC is a scientific body, we naively imagine that it's the scientists who are making the important decisions, but they don't even write the titles of their chapters. Instead, they're being told what to write about. There has to be a section on X, there has to be a section on Y. They're told how many pages they must say it in. They're also being urged to make sure that what they say now doesn't contradict earlier IPCC reports, and that it doesn't contradict what's being said in other chapters of the report that, to which they are making a contribution. So there are these kinds of comments to the authors in these documents. You should pay particular attention to ensure that there's a seamless continuation of previous IPCC efforts. It doesn't matter if the science has changed. We want a report to be a seamless continuation of what we've said before. You know, we want you to choose not the best case study that's going to demonstrate your point in your chapter. We want you to choose a case study that contributes to the overall theme of the report. And you should be aware that some of the feedback we've received is highlighting potential conflicts with other IPCC chapters and previous reports. So that's what the inter in internally IPCC authors are being told within the process. What's going on here has nothing to do with free inquiry. It has nothing to do with the pursuit of scientific knowledge. Years in advance, IPCC bureaucrats predetermine what topics the next report will explore and what topics it will ignore. In effect, the IPCC is ordering pizza. It's selecting pepperoni, tomatoes, and cheese, but no onions or peppers. Now the Working Group 2 section, the latest IPCC report, isn't due to be released officially until this coming March. But once again, material has been leaked to me, and I can tell you what the final title of Chapter 4 is. <laughs> Outsiders who read the draft told the IPCC this title was misleading. They said the problem could be solved easily. All you have to do is add three letters to this title. But that did not happen. The IPCC is a bureaucracy. It's a bureaucracy that uses scientists. Here's the first page of that chapter that's going to be released in March. Notice, it isn't the bureaucrats whose names are attached for all eternity to this misleading chapter title. It's the names of scientists on that document. So what's going on here? Why are scientists participating in this process, in this charade? If someone said to me as a journalist, we want you to write a report for us, Here's an outline of the issues you must discuss. If it's not in the outline, it's off limits. Now, this report has to be in sync with what our earlier report said. And no, you can't even add three characters to the title. You have no authority to make that decision. When this report is finished, we're going to put your name on it. We're going to tell the world that this is your analysis and that these are your conclusions. Do you know what I, as a journalist, would say to that proposal? I'd say, take your report, 
somewhere else. My reputation matters to me. I would never allow my name to be associated with a document that had been written under those kinds of conditions. Absolutely not. So, again, I ask, what are these scientists thinking? Why are they allowing themselves to be used in this fashion? Do they not understand that their presence adds a scientific veneer to a profoundly political process in a profoundly political organization? Do they not understand? They are the lipstick, and that the IPCC is the pig. Thank <laughs> you.